Swimoutlet.com delivers the best online shopping experience. With an extensive selection and the lowest prices, you're guaranteed to find the product you need. Here's what you get. Free shipping on all orders over $49. Free one to two day shipping on all orders over $99. All orders placed by 6 p.m. ship out the same day. Shop at SwimOutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, July 20th, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finise Monitor is Olympic gold medalist Garrett Weber Gale. Like the majority of people who attended the Olympic trials, Weber Gale left feeling disappointed with his swims, and he's here to tell us more about it from his home in Austin, Texas. Hey, Garrett, welcome back to the show. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Thanks for having me. Doing great, thanks. I'm sure you would rather be talking to us as a 2012 Olympian, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. But uh, tell me what your emotions have been like in these two weeks since trials. Well, initially when I missed the team, obviously I was very disappointed. That's not what I worked for or planned for. But actually, as the days have gone by, I've realized that I'm really happy doing what I'm doing. Um, obviously, there was a big sting with missing the Olympic team. I mean, I was working so hard, dedicated myself so um, so much, sacrificed a ton, and, and wanted to be there. And ultimately, of course, I would love to be um, at the training camp right now. But to be honest, life goes on. It is a minor turn in the grand scheme of the journey of life. And I am Olympic gold medalist, um, and that will never be taken away from me. You were 14th in the 50 free, 8th uh -huh. in the 100 free in Omaha. As you said, not the result you wanted. But uh, you wrote about your reaction to not yeah. making the Olympic team quite eloquent, eloquently, I've got to say, on your website, athleticfoodie.com. I want to read a couple uh, paragraphs from that. Uh, when I got back from, to Austin in the fall of 2011, my coach Eddie Reese and I decided the way for me to go faster was for me to get stronger. I've always battled getting stronger, and this was the area I needed to finally overcome. From September straight through March of 2012, I literally killed myself four days per week in the weight room. I was getting stronger and believed my goal of once again going 47 in the 100 freestyle was approaching. And then later you write, even though I was doing everything right to swim fast, I had worked myself into such a deep hole that I couldn't climb out of it. I hate to say it, but I overtrained. Essentially, all the hard work is pointless if you don't give yourself the time to recover from it. Your body needs time to heal and rebuild. Now, was this the first time you had experienced something like that as far as overtraining? I think it was the first time I experienced something to that degree over training because I just literally worked so hard and dedicated myself to a new uh, regimen, I guess you would say, this year, the Olympic year. And so I never really imagined it would take so much time to rest. Um, neither did my coaches. So it was just kind of, it, I mean, essentially it was just a training error. Uh, during the course of all that training, was there ever any concern that this might happen, that because you were putting so much work into your body that um, it might take a little longer than you might think to, to be ready to swim fast? Certainly not in the fall or the winter, but then as March rolled around, I you know didn't swim fast in Indianapolis. That's when I started, you know, really I cut back on my leg weight, you know, tremendously, and my legs got so strong this year compared to what they'd ever been and and so really after that Indianapolis meet I started coming back the legs a lot we started tapering um, off the weights somewhat but I like I said built myself into such a deep hole it was hard to get out and you know when, when I went to the meet in, in, Mar in Charlotte in I guess May that was you know I was still swimming slow and really eight nine weeks before the Olympic trials I was starting to get pretty worried that I didn't have enough time to rest which eight or nine weeks sounds like a long time but I had just broken the nervous system so hard through all the training that I'd done that it really takes a lot longer than that to fully recover. And so, what I should have done was I should have started, you know, tapering my weights in a different way starting in February so that I was gradually going down. And what we did was after we realized I was in such a deep hole and so broken down, we started kind of dramatically going off the weights. And I think that, you know, that wasn't the best way to do it. And ultimately, I just didn't have enough time to recover. Well, I think a lot of people who are, are watching this and thinking, well, you know, I would give anything to be able to be broken down like you were, get eighth in the, in the 100 and 14th in the 50. So, yeah. uh, but of course, you having won the 50 and the 100 in 2008, 
you had a lot of expert, a lot more expectations put on yourself. What would you say to somebody who um, feels like maybe they're overtraining in, in the kind of the way that you did? I think you know it, it is really important that you go to meets. I thought for a while that I really didn't want to go to Indianapolis. I didn't really want to race in the end of March, but it was super important that I did go to Indianapolis for the reason that we realized how broken down I was. So it's important to monitor how much you're lifting, go to meets to test yourself, see how you're doing in practice. And so those things, being open with your coach can help you define whether or not you're really broken down. And for me, you know, obviously moving forward, I, I would have a great understanding of how I would better adjust my training to not have happen what happened this summer. And like you said, I was very, you know, I had very high expectations going into this summer of swimming fast. You know, I had the second fastest relay split in the world last year in the 100 at 47.3. Um, you know, I went 48-1 in the 100 freestyle in Shanghai in a time trial, which is what Nathan Adrian won the 100 freestyle in at the trials. And, um, you know, I had expectations and confidence that I could win the 100 freestyle and go 47 again. And I think if the trials had been three or four weeks later, I would have won the 100 freestyler. And I still believe that I'm one of the greatest 100 freestylers in the world. So, unfortunately, I don't have that opportunity. And, you know, I, I didn't get the rest that I needed, but I'm still happy with knowing that I did absolutely everything that I could to compete well and swim fast. I took care of my diet, physical therapy, keep my body healthy. Um, and I, I literally, I was never a guy who shied away from training. And if anything, I probably was a guy who overtrained and worked too hard. And Eddie Reese and Chris Kubik will tell you that. Um, you know, in fact, Eddie Reese, after the 100 freestyle, I was telling him, I think maybe we just trained too hard. And he said, in any pool you've ever been in, in anything you've ever done, you've been the hardest worker. So, you know, that I think is a blessing and it can sometimes be a curse. And this time it didn't work out as well as we want. But, um, you know, I think it's important to continue having perspective in the fact that it's just swimming. And it's uh, like Neil Walker told me. It's just one stop on the journey of a happy life. So I've, I've read this uh, um, essay that you've written multiple times, and mm -hmm. uh, my, I guess the answer to this question I'm about to ask seemed kind of vague, but maybe you can answer it more specifically. Yeah. Um, was Olympic trials your last swim meet? It's hard to say that. You know, the Olympic trials, obviously, for me, I really love – to chase the dream of swimming and chase the opportunity of going faster and figuring out the challenge of how I can go faster. Obviously leaving there, I have so many thoughts that I could have gone a lot better, um, I could have gone so much faster, and, and really that leaves me very hungry to continue swimming, training, and go faster next time. Currently, I am you know working hard at Athletic Foodie, getting that business really ramped up. I'm actually going to London. Um, I will be supporting Team USA, doing appearances there, some hospitality engagements. So I'll be in London, and obviously that's going to sting to some degree watching everyone compete and sitting there watching them compete. Um, but ultimately, you know, I'm a supporter of Team USA, and I think it's important that I be there and show my support. So I'm not sure whether or not, um, you know, I'll get back in the water in September or January or um, May or who knows what I'll do. But, you know, I really love swimming. I've loved it the past several years, and, um, you know, it's taught me so many wonderful things. So I guess to be determined, but I know I still have a great hunger upon uh, swimming fast again. And I think when I, whenever there's a hunger, you know, um, people want to continue um, searching for that. So we'll see what happens, but I love swimming. I, if I swam again, you know, I would continue loving it, I'm sure. But uh, right now, I, I'm really focusing on athleticfoodie.com and helping that business achieve great things because, you know, ultimately our goal is to help people have a better quality of life by what they eat. Well, as a putting all my swimming fan and longhorn biases aside, I, I, I got to say it's great to, to hear that you're not completely giving up the sport, but um, yeah. I, I, I know that that's probably something that weighed heavily on your mind. Yeah, you know, it, it does weigh heavily on your mind, I think, to some degree, but and actually, I mean, I love swimming. It's given so many wonderful things to me, so many opportunities to travel around the world and compete and meet wonderful people. Um, 
you know, certainly in the food world, it's given me greater access than I would have ever had if I hadn't had swimming and hadn't had the success in swimming that I did. And so I will always be grateful for, for the sport of swimming, those in the swimming community who really helped me achieve great things and, and kind of go down a, a wonderful and happy journey. And for the rest of my life, I will always work to give back to the community of swimming, whether that's through swimming, um, through teaching kids, mentoring them. We're working on some athletic foodie events right now where we go into communities, we bring nutritionists, myself and Olympic parents, and uh, we have a more all-encompassing swimming events. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. What I do know is I love the swimming world. I, I really appreciate all they've ever done for me. I, I will continue to stay involved in the swimming world, and um, to the capacity that it is, I'm not quite sure yet. Well, uh, you, you mentioned you're going to be uh, working to grow your business, Athletic Foodie. What specifically will you be doing? So we're working right now at scheduling events. I think the swim clinics that people give are great, but ultimately people need to know, and especially kids need to know, what is really important about becoming successful. And it's not just figuring, figuring out your stroke and refining your stroke and having a better underwater kick. Being successful in the pool and in life is about many little things that you do. And so athletic foodie events are focused on the little things, what you should eat, stretching. Um, obviously, we do in the water work, starts, turns, um, talk about the Olympics. But we're bringing nutritionists to every event that we go to to talk to the parents and the kids about what they can do to become healthier and also to um, eat better for, for, for performance. I'm giving a live cooking demo at every single event that we're doing that's going to be a 20 minute demo of what people can cook the morning of a race with their parents or the kids can cook um, my mom is going to go into clinics with me she's gone to two or three of them before and parents absolutely love having her talk about how they can support their kids without smothering them um, the intricacies of supporting young athletes we're also having healthy food and drinks for the kids athletic food merchandise um, so it's a more all-encompassing concept and we're trying to get multiple teams involved in each event than I think just the normal swim clinic is. You know the no normal swim clinic you're doing some stroke clinics, you're doing autographs, some pictures and then you leave. But I think that we can offer the kids and their parents a greater value and so that's ultimately what I'm trying to do. Yeah I think that's a part of the sport that really has gone on tap gear and I think you're definitely yeah. um, going to be the person that can really bring this to the forefront. Yeah, thanks. And if you want an athletic foodie event, go to uh, athleticfoodie.com um, or email us at info at athleticfoodie.com. So really some exciting things. And also, you know, I'm not going to fully let this out of the bag, but I'm working on a healthy restaurant concept. I've been working on it for the past couple months. and I've been meeting with some people about um, how I would go about ha making that happen. And I think that is another branch of athletic foodie we're working on very diligently because ultimately I think there is a big need out there for people who want delicious food that's healthy um, and that's affordable. Well, I think you could be the next uh, Gordon Ramsay, only nicer. <laughs> I think that's absolutely right. I'm working on it. Well, uh, you said you're going to be in London for uh -huh. the um, Olympics. Uh, I imagine, like you said, it's going to sting a little bit, but uh, what do you think the Americans' chances are to uh, relive the magic in that foreigner free relay? You know what? After being on that relay, I'm never in my life going to say that Americans don't have a chance. You know, I believe America is the USA is the greatest country in the world, and not for a single moment leading into 2008 did I ever think that we would not win that race. Um, you know, we have great swimmers in our country. They're going to give an awesome run for the gold medal, and ultimately, it's the Olympics. So it's who comes prepared, who can handle the nerves, who can do the relay starts right. And I know whoever that they put on those relays will do as good a job as they can. And I'm looking forward to supporting those guys on their quest for gold. So um, one thing I do know is it's going to be a very intense race. And uh, I just, man, that's going to be a crazy ordeal to watch. I, I was actually a part of it, obviously, in 2008. But it'll be interesting to see it as a spectator. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be just as exciting. The, um, the roof will be blown off no matter what yeah. the result. No question. Actually, it's interesting. When I was at Olympic trials, the first couple of days before I swam, I would watch the, uh, the trials on TV because they were live on TV, obviously. And it's funny how I never really watched swimming on TV like that. And sitting in my hotel room, I would just get so many nerves and so excited and so um, you know, ready. And I would just sit there like, oh, my God, I want to race. I want to be in there. And, and there is so much excitement. And I'm really looking forward to watching that and supporting 
supporting those guys and, you know, representing and being an ambassador not only for the sport of swimming but also for the USA as best that I possibly can be while over in London and, and the rest of my life. Well, that sounds great, Garrett. Congratulations again on, on what you're continuing to do with your business and uh, safe travels to London. And um, I, like, you're, like you said, leaving the door open, I'm sure we'll uh, see you in some capacity on deck down the road. Yeah, there's no question. This isn't the end of me at all. Um, you know, it's just the start of something different. And, uh, you know, Roger Federer, I know that there's a quote in my blog, you know, after he beat Murray um, in Wimbledon, he said, you know, this isn't the end. It's the start of something great. So I'm not exactly sure what that next step is going to be, but I'm staying positive. I'm really happy. I understand that I'm still living the dream, and I completely believe that. And I'm thankful for having such a wonderful life. So I'm just moving forward. And, uh, you know, this is just a little turn in the road for me. Well, that's a great attitude to have, Garrett. Thanks so much. Thank you. And uh, we'll be in touch down the road. Thank you. Talk to you guys soon. All right. That's Garrett Weber Gale talking to us from his home in Welcome. Austin. That's it for today's Morning Swim Show. As always, we invite you to join in the conversation. You can go to our Facebook page or you can submit comments via our Twitter page. Our handle is at Swimming World. That's going to do it for today's Morning Swim Show. Thanks for watching.